Hey, it's Alicia from mobilitymastery.com and welcome to our new set. Isn't it awesome? I kind of like it. That's totally real brick back there. Just kidding. <laughs> but I love it. Um, so I hope you guys do visually. I'm excited about it, but I'm even more excited to bring you episode two of our Fast Fascia Facts series. And this one is another good one. I'm probably gonna say that about all of them. Uh, but the way this works is I'm going to read off three facts about fascia, uh, pretty sciencey here, but then I'm going to extrapolate and give you my theory about why I believe all of us who own a body should take this into consideration and understand the impacts on our health and our ability to heal, recover, and optimize our bodies. So uh, that's what we're doing. If you're excited, raise your hand <laughs> or give me a thumbs up. All right, so fact number one, fascia is composed in part of something called the extracellular matrix. And this is one of my favorite subtopics within the topic of fascia. And you're gonna hear more about the ECM as it's known for short uh, in upcoming fascia fact videos. Uh, and the reason I believe this is super important to know about. Well, actually there are so many things to know about the extracellular matrix or ECM, but I'm going to touch on two of the most important in my opinion today. Uh, so the extracellular matrix exists without the cell as the name implies. Uh, and it's made up of macromolecules like collagen enzymes, uh, and glycoproteins, and it's kind of gooey, gluey, uh, and actually meant to be in part composed of a lot of water, but then also those other macro macromolecules, like I just said, um, and it actually stores the nutrition that our cells need to function. So the cells actually pull nutrients out of the ECM into themselves, uh, so intracellularly, um, and then the cells actually excrete their waste into the ECM, and the ECM then has to move it through lymph and the fascia moving out of the body. So it has to move out of the body from the ECM. Uh, so very important, right? It's where your, your cells get their food, and it's also where your cells have to excrete waste. So what could happen is if the extracellular matrix becomes dehydrated and it starts to lose that nutrition or it starts to lose its water content or it can't take any more waste into it for some reason, then you're going to get cellular waste buildup, right? Um, and that could have a cascading health effect or impacts. Um, so that's just one thing to kind of think about that I, that I feel is really important about the extracellular matrix. And the other thing about it is that I believe this is where our fascia actually gets its spring or ability to absorb mechanical stress and the ability of that fascial system to act like a force multiplier and actually propel us through movements. One of you viewers recently mentioned something. I'm sorry, I totally forget who um, brought this up, but somebody mentioned that kangaroos actually can, like scientists are a little baff baffled, and kangaroos can actually bounce more than their muscles should be able to make them bounce. <laughs> um, and they were proposing maybe it's the fascia that's actually helping them bounce like that. It's totally possible. Um, so fascia helps us absorb mechanical stress and then spring out of it, right, without deforming. Uh, it definitely can absorb mechanical stress through things like running, hiking downhill, impact sports, things like that. But if the extracellular matrix part of fascia gets dehydrated, then it can't absorb that mechanical stress and we're gonna feel it more and be more prone to injury. And number two, the ECM contains a cell called a fascocyte. So the fascocyte was recently discovered and named by Carla Stucco, a fascia researcher uh, in Italy. And she discovered that the fascocyte is responsible for fascial gliding. And 
This science that I'm about to share is super exciting. And I practically jumped out of my chair, ran to Steph and I was like, oh my God, you won't believe it. <laughs> like I was super excited. Um, I'm a super nerd. Uh, but what was so cool about reading this science paper that I read, and if you're interested in the actual science paper, you can, um, we'll link to it below. You can click below uh, in the description box. But what was so cool about reading it this year in 2019 is that it supported the theory that I have had about fascia for years and the way to work with fascia effectively um, in one particular way that produces particular results. And it's not the only way to work with fascia and it's not the only way we should work with fascia. It's just a really important one. Um, so the fascia site is devoted to fascial gliding. How is that? Well, she discovered that the fascia site is only activated when fascia or dense areas of fascia or fascial adhesions are actually compressed with a heavy load and then those fibers are sheared um, kind of perpendicular or maybe around the bone. So there has to be this weighted compression element and a shearing effect to activate this cell called a fasciocyte. And then after the fasciocyte is activated within that part of the fascia that's just been worked on, the fasciocyte synthesizes something called hyaluronic acid. And we're definitely gonna cover this in another fast fascia fact because they're kind of each their own fact. Um, but the fasciocyte synthesizes hyaluronic acid and hyaluronic acid or HA is what imbibes the water we drink and hydrates the fascia, particularly the ECM. Not just the ECM, but um, definitely the ECM. So super interesting, very fascinating. What this means is that to activate the fascia site, you have to have that heavy load and com uh, compress and shear effect, right? Um, and just kind of in addition to this, I feel like I always kind of have to mention this even if we cover it later in another fast fascia fact. Um, there are other ways to work with fascia, for example, you can compress or you can stretch fascia, but it's not gonna activate the fascia site unless those fibers are sheared. What it will do instead is actually act activate fibroblasts, which synthesize collagen, which is definitely important. And as we talked about in fact, number one, uh, the extracellular matrix, of course, needs collagen. It's um, made up in part of collagen. So both are super important, but if you consider the fact that the human being is supposed to be up to 70% water, then having a high water content is critical, right? I don't think we're supposed to be 70% collagen. <laughs> so in my opinion, that compress and shear method of fascial release should be used more often than just compression alone or manual ther therapies that don't shear fascial adhesions um, and more than stretching. What are most of us doing these days? We're doing a lot of stretching. We're doing a lot of yoga. We're doing a lot of, you know, body work that doesn't necessarily shear fascial adhesions and that's totally fine. I think they're great methods. Um, but just FYI, every technique here on Mobility Mastery is going to attempt to teach you uh, how to compress and shear. I'm always trying to compress and shear, uh, even in certain areas where maybe it's harder to achieve, but that's always kind of our goal. And we get a little bit of uh, stretching when we do that anyway through the movement. Um, and then of course, just general compression as well, because we're using compression um, to then shear. So I hope you followed along with that and it made sense to you. Um, we're gonna cover aspects of this in other fast fascia facts. Um, so don't worry, we'll repeat it. Um, but if you have any questions about any of this, post it below this video. I would love to nerd out with you. Um, all right, number three, your muscles rely on fluid fascia to glide effectively. So when a lot of us think about muscle function and strength and flexibility um, and athletic potential, we think of muscle strength, right? Or we think of maybe muscle flexibility or attachment flexibility or joint flexibility or um, cardiovascular health, right? That maybe to be a powerful athlete, you have to increase your strength or increase your cardiovascular ability. But there's a missing component in my opinion to that conversation because those those things are you know necessary for sure um, but if your muscles don't have the glide they need you're not going to be effective as a mover 
no matter what kind of mover you are, whether you move from the couch to the kitchen and back again, <laughs> um, or you actually are some kind of athlete, even if it's just, you know, I shouldn't say just, even if it's, you know, yoga or hiking or some of the gentle or movement um, arts out there, um, or if you are, you know, a pro athlete or you're super into being fit, um, and maybe you have multiple sports, then this is critical to think about for you. So um, the reason I kind of lumped these three fascia facts together is because if you care about your movement potential and you care about, you know, your, I guess I should say movement and athletic potential, right? Your ability to perform better without more effort, basically. Um, I've had clients of mine report that they were hiking faster, running faster, lifting heavier, um, all of a sudden after sessions with me, when you know their training didn't indicate that there was they were supposed to make that much of an increase just because of you know their training schedule so i think there are implications here that are huge um, for increasing our abilities as movers but that glide is dependent on the fascia site and activating it and then having that fascia site synthesize hyaluronic acid which then imbibes water into the extracellular matrix um, which is a huge part of the reason those fibers can glide so when you think about muscle fibers um, muscle fibers themselves are pretty linear right it's a string of tissue and it's wrapped in fascia of course so every fibril of muscle tissue is wrapped in a piece of fascia and then every muscle uh, fiber, so fibril and fiber, um, each individual part, um, and then the, the part that encompasses multiple fibrils, right? So one fiber has multiple fi fibrils, um, all of those are wrapped in fascia, and each one of those pieces, um, all of those pieces need to glide effectively when you initiate movement. So super important um and i love nerding out about this if you couldn't tell so that's it for today those are our three fast fascia facts for episode two i hope you enjoyed it i hope you got something out of it and what i would love to hear from you is one takeaway for how this is maybe giving you a new insight to your own body right now or your own progress or maybe plateau with healing an injury or optimizing your athletic potential, something like that. Um, let me know what your aha is and how you're gonna use this information to make your fascia and mobility goals happen so you can master your mobility. Um, so share that below and I will definitely see you in the comments. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. I would love for you to stick around. We have new videos that go out every single week all about fascia, the nervous system, pain, and trauma. Uh, and I just love hanging out with you guys. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.